Amen. Amen. And then we can have our seats. It looks so good from where I'm standing. And I'm so glad that you found your way here. I'm not ignorant. Maybe there are those of us who came. They didn't feel like coming. But they made a decision and said, I am going to church. And you ask the feelings, catch up with me. Find me at Shiro, the place of breakthrough. And here you are. Clap for yourself for making it to church this morning. Amen. I also don't want to be ignorant. A few, a few years ago, I went to a salon in Zimmerman. And I found two girls. They didn't look familiar to me. And as we were walking there, I thought I was starting a conversation. And so I, we talked, and then I invited them to church. Then one of them said, by the way, we come to church. Oh, I told them, I've never seen you. I'm so happy to hear that you come to church. But now what shocked me was the next question. One of them asked me, can I ask you something? I said, yes. She asked me, what is your name? I told her, you have just told me you come to church. She, she made some faces. Then she told me like this, you know, every time I come to church and they invite you, they always say, and now we are going to invite mom to come. <laughs> By the way, this is a real story. So I discovered people might give you another name until yours is forgotten. Mine, I'm not permitting you to forget or to know, just in case it's your very first time. My name is Alice Kemani. I love Jesus. He made the difference in my life. The best decision I ever made in my life. I'm so glad that he found me. I don't want to tell you I found him. Imagine I was not looking for him. He found me, and I'm so glad that he found me. Amen. So welcome to church. And it doesn't matter where you find yourself this morning. Maybe you are feeling so dry. If your heart was visible, you can write the word dry. But that is the right material for the grace of God. If you want to confirm that, just go outside there where there is a lot of dust. And pour, it is very dry. And you pour some water. Pour some water where there is dust. And pour some water where there is water, it is so soaked with water. The one which is so dry will soak everything in. You are in the right place. You could be feeling dry, you could be feeling at the bottom, but this morning you are the right material for the grace of God. And may the Lord find you in your space this morning. Amen. I would want us to discuss this morning on a very interesting topic. By the grace of God, the fact that here, during the, <laughs> I think this is a, a, a tradition of Shiloh, they don't talk Swahili. Here, muongeaki Swahili. Uko kuingine kwetu, kuna service igine tunongeaka Swahili. But the good thing is that you understand. So it's a confirmation that by the grace of God, never mind at what level you are like, but you understand English. But I'm here to remind you, the exams you failed, you didn't fail, some of you didn't fail because you never went to class. You failed because you forgot what the teacher said or what the lecturer said. Or you decided to leave the lecturer talking and you decided to go, to go your own adventures in, with the mind and then at the point where you woke up and came back to class, you, have another, you had another topic. So when you respond to a question during an exam time, the lecturer just crosses and writes irrelevant. Because you wrote correct things, but for the wrong question. So we usually fail, not because we never went to school, but because we forgot. And therefore this morning, I want us to read, I want us to discuss on the end through this question. What has God told you? What has God told you? And I was so happy because it looked like it was thematic with the worship. Did you realize, um, uh, Brother Pastor Stephanie? Yeah. <laughs> I just said that. Yes. Did you realize he kept on telling us about what God has said? 
it is very important just like it is important for you to remember what the lecturer said it is very important to remember what god has told you and usually god has a different message for different people Several years ago, I met a brother who was a friend, and he has since, he, he has since relocated to UK. And um, I met him outside, and he told me I have a testimony. He used to be part of the worship team, but that day, I think he woke up feeling under the water. So he never even came to minister in the worship team. But he said, I must go to church. So he was telling me, let me tell you. When I came to church, I was feeling so down. I was actually as asking myself, now where am I going to church? But when I got right inside the compound, I found the worship team singing the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That was even before he entered the sanctuary. He told me that song ministered to me so much. Even if you asked me now to go back home, I would have comfortably gotten back home and say I was in church. I want to tell you, I know there is somebody whom God has already spoken to this morning. Because God has got very specific messages for you as a person. God is very specific. Therefore, this morning, I pray that you'll be so attentive. You'll be so intentional. And maybe you have already received your message through the worship. Or when you are worshiping, the Holy Spirit ministered to you. I want to tell you that God wants you to be keen, to pay attention when you come to the house of God. Because it is that which he tells you that will make the difference in your life. So when you miss out on the message, you miss out on the transformation, you miss out on your miracle, you miss it out. I pray that this morning none of us will miss out because you will say, I brought myself to church. And by the way, this is the best decision you made. Do you know the many miracles we read in the New Testament were for those people who showed up, who showed up irrespective of the situation? Can you imagine? But Myers was seated somewhere, but he had some people saying he was somewhere, he was positioned. You are positioned this morning to hear God's word. Position yourself. The woman with the issue of blood, she didn't stay at home. She, actually, she knew she was not supposed to be in church, but she presented herself. That woman we read in the book of, of Luke, of the woman whom the Bible says she was bent double. Never mind how many hours she took to get, find herself in church, but she forced herself to be in church. But when, because she was in the right place, the Lord ministered to her need. You are in the right place, and there is a word for you. And it may not come from me. Maybe it will come, just be alert. The Lord can show up through anyone, anything, or any place. Praise the Lord. Having said that, I said I want us to talk about what has God told you. And I would want us to read from the book of Genesis chapter 6, and we are going to read from verse 1 to 6. Genesis 26, if you can project this, and then we are going to read, because by the grace of God we know English. By the way, it's not everybody who knows it. Just try and visit some of these places where they speak languages you know nothing. You get bored and you are in a wedding. <laughs> one time we went for a wedding of one of the worship team members in Bomet. And I said, oh God, if this is how we treat people, forgive us. Do you know they spoke encouraging throughout? They would laugh, they would talk, <laughs> they would sing. And here we are, we were disconnected, and you can almost doze. And it is a wedding, you are supposed to be excited. So it is very counted a blessing and a privilege that you can commune and communicate and understand each other. We are blessed, so we can read English. So if you project it for us, let's read together. Can we read it in NIV, please? Ah, what did I just say? Genesis. No, I said Genesis 21. Tw Genesis 21, sorry. And then we'll read from verse 1 to 6. Genesis 21. Yes. Let's read together. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said. I want you to mark the words. Eh? As he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant 
and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was, no, let's leave it from there. Let's read from verse 1, 2, 3 for now. Project for us, verse 1. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Remember I said I want us to talk about what has God told you. Now if you cannot even remember what he has told you, what do you expect? Even when he shows up, will you know he has shown up? Did, have you ever waited for somebody you don't know? You have to agree on a few things, on how to identify that person. You have to say, I am the lady dressed in white and wearing a red jacket. I am the one speaking with a phone. You rift, have you ever, and an Uber driver, does it? Am I related? So when you don't know, then you should expect nothing. Because even when it comes, you won't know it has come. I pray that none of us, your miracle will show up, but you will not know it is your miracle because you are not even aware. It is so keen after every meeting you've ever attended. Thank God I'm in a youth service. Next week we have a harvest conference where we shall have intensive teachings. You sh it should make it one of your assignments. After every session, ask yourself, what has God told me? That is the only thing that will make a change in your life. What God has told you. Meaning, you cannot afford to come for the sake of coming. Just for, that, for the pastors or for the organizers to see that you are present. That shall not be your portion. You will come and you'll be so keen and you will ask yourself, let me tell you, God knows you by name. The Bible says there is a book with names. Never mind whichever name you want, God knows you by name. So God has a message for you, assigned to you, because of your destiny and of your purpose. And we have just read that God visited Sarah. I don't, put it in NKJV. I know I had asked for NIV, but let's, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. It matters what God has spoken to you. Do you note first, uh, verse 1? Let's just hold it there. The Lord visited who? God was very specific. God is very specific. God is visiting somebody today, this morning, and he knows you are here. Do you, can you remember your name? And the Lord visited Alice, I want you to speak to yourself. The Lord is visiting me today, this morning. Visiting you as a person, very specific. Because God is very relevant. And let me tell you, when it is God speaking, you will connect. You may not have to speak something, you connect. During the crucifixion, on that night when Jesus was betrayed, when Peter denied Jesus, and earlier on, they had had a conversation with Jesus. And Peter had said he can never deny Jesus. Even in the movies, it shows that when Peter denied Jesus the third time, their eyes met. They never said nothing. Just their eyes, they connected. Nobody else got the message. And the Bible says, Peter just went out and wept bitterly. They connected. Let me tell you, you will connect with your word if you are attentive. And if you are expecting. The Lord visited Sarah. How I pray this morning you will tell God, you are visiting me. Because I'm the one who is in charge. Forget, it's only in charge. Forget about everybody else. Maybe just the speaker who is permitted. And by the way, I prayed for you. And I prayed that none of you will be disappointed because you will pick your word and run with it. And then you can hold God accountable. God is the only person, he will never change goalposts. I read of a story of a man. 
A man went to his lawyer and told him, my neighbor owes me 500, 5,000 shillings and he won't pay up. What should I do? The lawyer looked at the person and said, do you have any proof he owes you the money? The, the lawyer asked. The man said, no. It was on mutual understanding. Okay. The lawyer had a solution. This is what he, the solution he gave the man. Go and write a note to the neighbor and ask him and tell him he owes you 50,000 shillings. He owed him how much? 5,000. But go and write in the note, ni kama unamudai. But unamudai gapi? 50,000. And the man said, ah, but how can I ask him for 50,000 and he owes me 5,000? Ex he said, exactly. The man will respond to you and say, I don't owe you 50,000 shillings, I owe you 5,000 shillings. And from that point on, that will become the proof. God is not like that. God will not change goalposts. When he says, I will do this, he means exactly that. He would be, you don't have to pray God games so that there will be proof. His word is proof. He follows his word to perform it. Bona as if he will. It is very important. And God keeps his word. God visited somebody. However, let me take you earlier than that. Before God visited Sarah, we all know that she had really waited together with the husband. They waited for 25 years for this miracle to happen. It may look like it is taking too long, but if it is God who said it, he will do it. Keep on telling yourself, and I'm so glad it was on these grounds two weeks ago, when we were reminded of speaking the language of God. Speaking the language of God. So do you know what God has told you? It may look like it, it has taken too long, but let me tell you it will come to pass. Because God will not be like that neighbor who, who is acting like Ulinipea wapi? Tuliadikania wapi? Ushani ona kwako? Now you have no proof. And they had to cook a proof with the lawyer. That is not our God. Our God keeps his promises. And he is visiting somebody this morning. It may have taken days. It may have taken months. But let me tell you, if God has said it, he will do it. God binds himself with his word. Remember, maybe you can project for us Genesis 15, and we are going to read from verse 8 to 21. Genesis 15, 8 to 21. Let's read together. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to me, I, that's not the story I want. Is that Genesis 15, 8 to 21? Yes. I want where this discussion, because God is a covenant keeper, the discussion God had with Abraham when God was promising Abraham that you become a father of many nations, many descendants, yet he had no son. And God takes him for a walk and tells him to look at the stars. And he was told his descendants will be like that. And then he's asking, how shall it be? But God says it shall come to pass. And we have just read, this is in Genesis area 1. Skubuki niyo niyo kuminatano mahali hapo hivo hivo. Sinyi ni Bible students. Tuede tukasome. Mbana asifiwe. And now in Genesis 21, God shows up. Because God never forgets. He's a covenant keeping God. That is his nature. When he makes a promise, he will keep that promise promise. 
verse 2 of Genesis 21. I want us to read verse 2, where we left. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Hold it there. Bore to Abraham a son in his old age. I want you to note that word, the descriptive word, old, young. They are trying to say the, the, the timing was not correct. Abraham was so old. No wonder in the book of Hebrews it says the, Sarah obtained strength to conceive because she was past the bearing age. In his old age, that is Abraham. The same case to Sarah. She was old. But when God visits, he defies all the prevailing circumstances. Maybe you are looking at your situation and you are disqualifying yourself. There are so many things that are disqualifying you. I just closed my business last week. I have turned whatever number of years. Many things that are disqualifying you. I never got, I only got to class 8 or form 4. Or I did, do you know the devil has a way of showing you like you did the wrong course? It's like God had gone on leave for the four years you are pursuing your course. And when, when he's finished, he wakes up. And he thinks because you did this, those, those other ones who did that other one, which I don't want to mention, do you know God does not need your degree to meet your needs? Do you know God does not need anybody's recommendation? Do you know you don't need to know nobody? All you need is to know God. Because you do great things, not because you have so much, but because you have God. Because God has got everything. I want to encourage somebody this morning. And I want to refer you back again. What has God said to you? Do you know it? Let me tell you. If you are a foreigner to the Bible, that the last time you read, you opened the Bible, was on Wednesday, if you ever came for the midweek service. And majority of you, vire na waona hamu Ask me how. By the way, here I come anytime, by the grace of God, I happen to come from this direction. Eh? I live this direction. So this is my way to church or to my office. So naeza fika hapa nifikiri, wacha tu nione tu, na ingia huko, na hata, ok, wakati mgini naongea kana ule supervisor hao, sababu yone ya maujua, unaigia huko, uta, and it is very refreshing. So I usually pass here, I find Charles. Mpaka mume condition Charles here. You should come and visit one of these days on a Wednesday and see the number of seats he, he, he organizes for us. And it is because your seat was not there. Because he has not seen you the whole of this year. So he has decided, hakuna haja, this is the kuwaka stuck there, and I'm stuck, araf kesho zake, and as he's stuck, sasa ameamua. How I pray that your seat will not be stuck from January to December in Jesus' name. That is where you find, you get to connect with that word. Then you run with it. You miss out on when God is delivering the word. You miss out on your promise. I may not have many amens, but I've just said that. Eh? <laughs> Ask your neighbor. Where kiti yako inakuwa imepangu wa kwa kona? Ebu mulize uyo nebako. Ebu mulize. Na ugoje majibu. Mulize kama mwaka uote kiti yake imekuwa imepangu kwa kona ile ama ni ile kona igine. I didn't hear the answer. But I pray that you will say like David, as a deer panted for the water, so my soul pants for you. You know when you are hungry, you don't want many stories, you want a glass of water. How I pray that God will give us, revive us again, and give us that thirst for his word. And that... I know, by the way, I understand. It is true you are in class. But let me tell you, I also know, you are not in class from January to December every day. So at least we should be seeing you when you have crossed the school. Right. 
ama mliambia Brian mmetuma apologies zenu for the rest of the year <laughs> God follows his word to perform it God has a history of keeping his her, his word Do you know the story of the children of Israel and their deliverance from Egypt is part of the promise that God was when he visited Sarah that was part of the promise that is how now Abraham became a father of many nations of many descendants and then they grew up and multiplied and they became the strongest nation the nation of Israel so God has a history of keeping his his word and is it a wonder Joshua 21:45 Joshua 21:45 This was the confession not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel all came to pass Shall we read together just in case there is one who had just left me please come back let's read not a word failed of any good thing which the lord had spoken to the house of israel all came to pass so again what has god told you what has god spoken to you are you that specific can you say god you said this although it looks like now i'm going this way but let me tell you i also know remember you have a full time enemy he would want to look disqualify god he would want you are the one who is to decide which church you are going to sit down and listen you either decide to sit down where jesus is the teacher or you sit down where the devil is the lecturer where the devil is lecturer you remember the language of the devil he will tell you god doesn't even know you imagine he has forgotten you cause you don't look like he can fulfill any promise with you you even remember what you did the other day hey and then there if you are not careful you find yourself just nodding your head by the time we are going there you are telling even hata kuna haja kwenda kanisani unaenda huko unaoba unalia unaenda hakuna kitu inatendeka let me tell you if god has said it not a word will fail god will not fail in what he has said indeed he has spoken it he will bring it to pass he has purposed it he will also do it So historically God has kept his word. He kept his promise to Abraham of many descendants. He actually told Abraham, "So shall your offspring be." Genesis 15:5. Ah, this is what I was looking for. Then he brought him outside. This is God bringing. Can you imagine having a walk with God? How I desire. And do you know God can take you for a walk anywhere? Because it doesn't have to be a face walk or walk. He, you can just have a walk with the Holy Spirit. Then he brought him outside and said, "Look now toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them." And he said to him, "So shall your descendants be." How I pray that this morning the Lord will take somebody for a walk and tell you you have been waiting for me to go back to school I have not forgotten you I am connecting you you will find yourself inside there how he will find yourself there should none of your business do you know all you have to do is to tell God and leave the business of how to him I repeat you tell God then the business of how the problem is you want to be the one asking and you also want to be the one to provide the way and you don't know you are asking because you don't know isn't that a setup of failure and disappointment how i pray this morning you will take god at his word 
And I pray that God will visit somebody this morning and remind you what he had told you. And he's saying, I have not forgotten. Because to God, one day is like a thousand. And a thousand can be like one day. They waited for 25 years for a son. The son came. And that was not, never mind the brothers. There in between, before Isaac arrived, there was an Ishmael. But that one did not deter God from keeping his word. Is it a wonder if you continue with this story in Genesis 21? Because Ishmael had already shown up. Because they had felt like giving up. And they had come up with a plan B. I like, it is a very interesting story. Because when Sarah, remember it was his idea, her idea. But the Bible says now after where we read, that Abraham decided to throw a party. And Sarah saw... Um, Ishmael making fun of Isaac. And there and then she decided this one has to leave this place. Abraham was very sad because it was his son. It was not Sarah's son, it was Ibrahim's son. But because God was still committed to the other promise, he told Abraham, listen to what Sarah is telling you. Let Ishmael and Hagar go. But I will also bless him. Because my promise is through Isaac. I want to tell you it doesn't matter the many things you have grown. The many times you have goofed. God is still committed. Because you said yes to him. He wants to keep that promise. There is always a comeback. I want to encourage somebody this morning. You can come back just the way you are. And, I'll, and give God a chance. And God will visit you. And fulfill his promise. So we all know about that story. God kept his word. He made Israel to become. And as if that's not, not enough. Even after they multiplied. And later on they became slaves. God still showed up. And he came to deliver them. And the first. And maybe you can say there were three huge miracles. For the children of Israel to be delivered from Egypt. There was the miracle of breaking the Israelites out of slavery. To, the, to become the strongest nation at that time. It looked mission impossible. But it came to pass. How did it come to pass? Not because God sent some people to fight Pharaoh. Ten plagues. God is so unique. God will find you. God will find a way of fighting your battle. God will find a way of fulfilling your promise. So God delivered them. You remember when Joseph, um, Joseph was dying, he told the children, his brothers that God will visit you. And when you are leaving this nation of Egypt, do not forget my bones. It was prophetic. He didn't know how. He didn't tell them how. All he knew is that God would visit them. God visited them via Moses. And Moses, the strategy he used, God brought the ten plagues. I am here to tell you, God created everything. And he will create an avenue to meet your need. Now Moses corrected everybody. A bunch of people who are slaves, everybody used, all they used to know is how to make bricks and many other things. But I want to believe the next big miracle was how to make these millions of Israelites to become a strong nation and be able to follow one person. Is it a wonder they kept on disturbing Moses? And then Moses would go and act very tough. And when he goes to God, he says, I'm trying to tell you it's not an easy road, but God will find a way. So the next miracle was how they were able to be contained and to be read in a wilderness to the promised land. The impossibility of putting together into an obedient nation and become and be able to withstand the challenges in the wilderness. And the third miracle was the possibility of this nation 
defeating the more numerous and powerful nations living in Canaan. It is God for us, his word, to perform it. This morning, what has God told you? God has promised many things. It is very interesting that there are so many unclaimed promises. You are unclaimed promises. When the Bible says, some, I heard somebody say this, that the Bible says that when we get to heaven, God will wipe away our tears. Then he clarified and said, some of the tears you'll be wiping from us will be tears. When you see the blessings you missed out, Navira Urisubuka. And yet there, were all the, there was all the, that provision for you. But you never claimed it. Why didn't you claim it? Because you didn't know. The other day I went to Huduma Center. I had uh, lost my ID. And I was surprised. And as we were queuing to register which counter we wanted to go, those of us who have ever gone to Huduma Center, you have an idea. There were some people who were trying to educate us. And they were giving us hard outs on how to claim the unclaimed assets. And they were telling us, maybe they are, they are your relatives who died and you have never gone for their benefits. That is the counter. If, if you go there, you'll be told which documents you can present. And then you'll be able to access what your, your parents, maybe they have died and you have never claimed. They don't know how to get the owners. And now they have, they have um, introduced a counter at Huduma Center where you, if you have, and, and imagine I saw some people, like, I like <laughs> human beings, are no wonder they are social beings. So ananiuliza. So unafikiria kwa hivyo naeza kuenda kwa bia, jisijui, baba angu alikuwa nafanya kazi na posta. I told her, hey, Enda, what you need to look. Now, you know, you are going to get a little bit of 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 you don't claim them because you don't know. How I pray that you'll be so selfish when God speaks to you. When, and that my due, God will speak to you through his word. And that promise is for whosoever. And once away, you are not even whosoever, you have a name. So that promise is yours. You put your name there. Like where we read, and God visited Sarah. You say, and God visited Alice. And, and God, I am waiting. Speaking the language of God. God, I am waiting. This one looks like it backfired. But I am not giving up. I am not relenting. Because you never forget. God is not like you. Neither does he change goalposts. So, and, and I, I, I give myself, I, I, I got to do this research. Eh? It is very common for people to never claim the money their deceased loved ones have deposited into accounts. Often because they don't know where the funds are deposited. It was very interesting that I read of this story in Crivehard, Ohio. I'll confirm with somebody else whom I know has gone visiting there. That Crivehard, Crivehard Ohio built a, built a beautiful 10-story bank building known as Society of Savings from unclaimed funds of people. This state, the states in America, it's like it's a nation in itself. They have different laws. Unezakuta kwa hawa wanakubalia hii na kwa hii state because they are very huge. So in, in Ohio, there was so much that people had not claimed. So they decided to build a, a building which they called Society of Savings. The directors of the bank, after waiting for years for these depositors to claim that which was theirs, turned the money over to the building of this beautiful bank building. Let me tell you, 
there are those of us. Your unclaimed promises are benefiting somebody somewhere. Just because you have decided where I kuhusu, how to soma Biblia, ata ukiambiwa, na how to enda kule wanasomesha, na ata sasa labda umepaga wea ta uta kuja iyo harvest conference, sio kwa sababu hawezi, lakini haujisiki. Wacha ni kuwabia usijisikie, lakini na ata wea ata wea baraka, ata nazo wasita kusikia. Mba nasifiwe. These things are for the seekers. Those who seek, find. Those who ask, find. Those who read, know. So some of us will miss because of ignorance, because you don't know. I pray that will not be you. Every day you'll be saying, if the Bible says that your word is a light unto my feet, which word is writing your path today? Which word? Which promise? Which counsel? Because it is when you allow the word of God to counsel you and guide you, you'll find yourself somewhere where you will wonder, how did I find myself here? And then you discover it was a divine setup. Don't ask me whether, whether I'm full of many stories. But, let, but by the way, reading is a hobby. I love reading. I love the space, me and books, keep us together, I am okay. So don't be surprised if you hear me telling you many things, I love reading. So I read this story of a man whose, whose mother passed on. This was also in the US. His mother passed on and um, he got, he was an only child. So he got the benefits. Uh, the leftovers after the funeral arrangements and the like. But in their home, they had a very nice, beautiful home. And everything, they corrected everything which they were not using and they put it in the attic room upstairs. Then later on with the time, this man retired and now he was barely surviving with his retirement package. And because he was not very strong now to work as hard, Life became so tough. And he, now he was planning to relocate and go and live with one of his brothers who, who was younger and was still working. And now he needed to clear the, the place where he was living and pick the things that he needs and then now he can go and relocate to the next place. So when he went to attic um, loom, he came across a Bible which his mother we, they used to use it as a family Bible. Oh, he, got, he never used to read the Bible. He thought he only knew was as worker. So he took the Bible. And um, opening it, he was amazed to find banknotes scattered throughout its pages. He counted in cash. It was a lot of money. And by the way, so many years had passed since the passing on of the parents. He said, all the time, he had fortune waiting in his Bible, but had never opened it. I am even planning to relocate to go and live with my brother because I can hardly make my heads meet. I have really suffered, living on hard doubts. And all this money, so the parents, because they didn't, they didn't have another son, they had left money in cash and they had read a lot of information on where to get the other money. So this one only got the inheritance which people changed to facilitate the funeral expenses. It was so sad that he had lived for almost 20 years in their poverty. Yet there was so much in cash and even those uncreamed huduma center yao haku And maybe this morning you are looking at me and you are wondering, and the way I am broke, and the way it is true, but what has God said? Can God contradict his word? We read in the book of Joshua, and God followed. None of them he failed. He kept each one of them. God will not fail you. God did not fail Sarah. God did not fail Abraham. God did not fail Joshua. 
Is it a wonder that in Joshua chapter 1, the Bible says that no man, do not be afraid, no man will be able to stand before you. And we know Joshua as a man of war. He fought them and he came out victorious because God follows his word to perform it. Hebrews 4.12, as we wind up, Hebrews 4.12. If you can put it in NLT, maybe. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Let me read it in message version. Can you project it for us in message version? Or I just read. God means what he says. Shall we read together? God means what he says. What he says goes. His powerful heart is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. Verse 13. Nothing and no one is impervious to God's word. We can't get away from it no matter what. Project verse 12 again. Tell your neighbor, God means what he says. I see some of you, you have decided you are not speaking. Turn to the other one. Come on, I can't you to Turn to the other side. Let's tell them, God means what he says. Abu Mwabie, what he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel. Cutting through everything. Is your thing included in the everything? Your thing is included in the everything. Okay, tell them, you know, you know you're in church, eh? Whether doubt or defense, <laughs> laying us open to listen and obey. <laughs> Verse 13. Tell your neighbor, and now I want you to be very specific, very intentional. Nothing, Nothing. And, no one and no one is impervious to God's word. We can't get away from it, no matter what. So what has God told you? And imagine you can't get away from it. If you can't remember, then you are the problem. I pray that this morning, you'll ask the Holy Spirit to remind you. And then you can take the word back to God and tell God, this is what you have told me. I am still waiting. Where we read in Genesis 21, we read, at the set time, God visited Sarah. God has a set time. How I pray you not run ahead of God. Neither will you be left behind. But on daily basis, you tell God, you didn't come yesterday. I am waiting for you today. I know you will come because your word is final. Shall we all arise? I don't know what God has told you. I want to give you a minute to remind you, to remember what God has told you. Wewe tu diyo unajua. Don't look at your neighbor. Hajui. Hii conversation yako na mugu. Mugu wamekwabia nini. I want you to reflect and ask yourself, what has God said? Maybe you're asking, how does God speak? God speaks through his word. So what promise have you read? And as you read, you connected. You felt this one is mine. What has he said? And that one now becomes your weapon. Every day you go to God, you'll be telling him, I'm waiting you on you on this. 
what has God told you? And I want to give you a minute and you speak it back to God. What has he told you? Remember you are his son, you are his daughter. He knows you by name. He's not seeing all of us here. He's just seeing you. He's here listening to you. Forget about the others. When it comes to God, you are number one on his cue. Open your mouth and let God hear what you can remember about your safe and your case. Remind God about your case. Put a claim. Put a claim. I pray that it will not be among the unclaimed things. Put a claim. What is it that you are waiting upon God? Put a claim. Remind him what he has told you. Put a claim. Put a claim. And I want to invite the worship team here. Open up your mouth. Nobody will open up the mouth for you. Just open it up. You are the only one who knows what God told you. Remember we said you said it and you leave the how to God. And I want to have the worship team we remind in a, in a sober mood. We are going to confess that one more time. Sijui ufanyalo. Let it not be a business how God will do it. Oh, you need to know that akiamurisha itakamilika. Open up your mouth. Take yourself before God. He's your father. He knows you by name. Take yourself. Put a claim. Put a claim. You are at the counter of God. What has he told you? Because he follows his word to perform it. Ukiamurisha Vina Kamilika Sijui Ufanya Vu Sijui Utenda Vu Lakini Nacho Fahamu Kile Nacho Jua Ukiamurisha Ukiamuli Vina Kamilika, Vina Kamilika, Bwana Sijui, Sijui Ufanya Vio, Sijui Ufanya Lo, Sijui Utenda Vio, Sijui Utenda Lo, Lakini Kile Ambacho, Vina Fahamu Nikuwa, Jehovah. Ukisema ya kwamba Yesu nimepona Ukisema ya kwamba utaniokoa Yesu Oh unaweza Come on unaweza yote Unaweza yote Fungua kinywa chako mwambie anaweza Unaweza anaweza kuokoa anaweza kuponya anaweza kukukomboa anaweza kukuinua hakuna kitu gumu kwa Yesu hakuna ukiamuli vina kamilika vina kamilika oh unaweza unaweza yote unaweza yote Yesu unaweza Kile nacho jua, kile nacho jua, kile nacho jua, ukiamulisha, lina kamilika. Sema tena, kile nacho 
kile nachojua yeye kile nachojua ukiamulisha litakamilika if you want us to believe together that one which you are putting a claim on god if you lift up your hands we are going to make that prayer and we are telling god you unaweza yote how you leave it to him how he will do it is none of your business just give the lord an opportunity to do it his own way if you lift up your hand we are going to make that prayer of faith that you know he will do it unaweza yote unaweza unaweza yote baba kile nachojua kile nachojua ukiamrisha ukiamuli vina kamilika Lina kami Oh Yesu unaweza yote Unaweza yote Hakuna usiloliweza Bwana Yesu Unaweza Hakuna gumu kwa Yesu Hakuna gumu kwako Jehova na kile nachojua Kile nachojua Hukia sabwale hey vina kamili oh unaweza unaweza yote unaweza yote unaweza yote unaweza yote na kile na chojua nachojua ukisema ukiamulisha unakamilisha mambo yote inakamilika hallelujah father that is the confession of our hearts lord your sons and daughters are lifting up those things they are believing you for we are lifting them to you lord and we are telling you we consider you faithful you are visiting us in your own set time and god you are going to perform it oh god because your promises are yea and amen therefore i want to lift my brethren before you oh god for the claims they are making before you this morning that it may give you joy and pleasure even to meet every need oh god we disconnect ourselves with doubt we disconnect ourselves dear father with faithlessness and we are defying our doubts and our minds and we are saying you are a faithful our god Therefore Lord I pray that you would meet every person that made it to church or every person who could be listening to this and I connect them with your faithfulness your supernatural performances Lord that it may come to pass thank you lord that you have a history of keeping your word you are bound to your word oh god you follow your word to the dot oh god do it to us oh god we consider you faithful we receive it by faith and we leave the how to you because you are a good god we honor you we bless you this day for this is our prayer of faith and we pray in jesus name amen you can appreciate god